Hi folks, Matt Easton here. So in previous videos I've uh, made talking about um, wooden and leather scabbards and um, steel scabbards. And a question that often comes up is why would you make a scabbard of steel or brass? Why would you make a metal scabbard? Well the first thing to say about metal scabbards is that actually whilst they're metal on the outside, be it steel or, or brass, um, often they have wooden slats on the inside, okay? Some of them are um, wooden slats down each of the flats and some of them are actually wood in their entirety. Um, and so in actual fact they are kind of, uh, many of them are wooden scabbards inside but they're metal on the outside. However that's not true of all of them. Some, some metal scabbards uh, and you'll notice that bayonets commonly have metal scabbards as well, um, are just uh, essentially a tube of metal in, into which you put your blade. So why did they come about? Well, primarily, the main reason why they came about was probably durability. If uh, military authorities are producing weapons which are going to be stored in armories, and then issued out to soldiers, so we're talking about troopers' weapons rather than officers' weapons here, um, then the issue of durability becomes a very major one. And we see the same thing with rifles. If we look at um, uh, muskets and rifles across history, and in fact in the modern age as well, um, firearms that are made for military issue are generally what we call over-engineered. They're bulked up, they're made more robust than they actually need to be. If you look at a target rifle compared to a military rifle, the one major reason why a military rifle tends to be more bulky in its stock and bulky in all of its parts is to make it more durable. Military weapons have to be able to survive a military campaign. And um, clearly a, a sword, that's um, whether it's hanging off a belt or attached to the saddle of a horse, if it's a cavalry weapon, then it's going through very, very tough, rigorous, everyday kind of being bashed around. If it's on a belt, then it has to survive someone getting on and off a horse repeatedly um, and, you know, banging against the side of the saddle or the um, spurs. Very often steel scabbards have a dent down here uh, where it bangs against the stirrups um, of, of the horseman. Um, and of course occasionally people trip and stumble when they're getting on and off a horse or indeed if they're just walking around on foot and uh, banging against doorways or up steps or all of these sort of things. So scabbards get bashed around quite a hell of a lot um, and whilst in a sort of maybe a, a tribal society where everyone has their own swords and looks after their own swords um, and maintains their own swords uh, a wooden scabbard or leather scabbard might make sense um, because first of all they're going to be generally speaking the weapon isn't going to get such tough uh, abuse uh, and usage as, as a, a military weapon would, would do um, but equally if it's their own weapon they look after it more and they tend to be worn in ways that mean that they're less likely to get bashed around if you look at the way for example that a, a katana is worn through the, through the sash it's kind of fairly well protected from being bashed around, whereas swords that hang off, uh, slung off belts, tend to just, you know, get kicked and get hit on doorways and walls and other kinds of things, more than um, maybe tool-wise and katanas that are kind of worn higher up on the body. Um, so it's, uh, it's, first of all, for durability, and that's a very, very major factor. It is worth mentioning, however, that uh, swords like this, officers' swords, uh, which maybe are not, they're not issued out, officers bought their own weapons. Um, so durability is still an issue, but it's less of an issue with officers' swords. And it's worth noting that wood and leather scabbards in the 19th century came in, particularly in, in Britain, but in other European countries as well. Wooden scabbards came into use for officers' swords when they didn't come in for troopers' swords. So at the time that officers were starting to use wood <coughs> and leather scabbards um, in, say, the 1870s and 1880s, when it really started to become common, the cavalry troopers still had steel scabbards because their weapons were stored in armories and dished out and abused over the course of you know many, many years and uh, expected to last and survive, whereas the officer would, generally speaking, look after his own sword
uh, a bit more carefully, but equally if his scabbard got broken or damaged, which frankly it's fairly easy to break and damage wood and leather scabbards, then he can buy a replacement for it, it's not going to cost the government anything. Um, the other thing worth mentioning is that wood and leather scabbards, uh, as used in various um, Asian countries and in fact of course used in medieval and renaissance Europe, are fairly fragile. It is pretty damn easy to break a wooden scabbard. Um, all sorts of ways you can do it. Um, obviously if it's hit by something, um, if you've drawn the sword out of it, it becomes quite weak. It's fairly strong whilst it's on the sword, but once you take the sword out, it's fairly easy to break a wooden leather scabbard. And uh, for example, if you you know if you fall over or if you just bash it on a doorway or something, or or you slightly fumble when you're getting off your horse, it's quite easy to break one of these wood and leather scabbards. However, they were relatively cheap and relatively easy to replace in the medieval and renaissance period. Um, so, and in actual fact, there is a 19th century. Um, uh, sort of discussion or debate uh, in in various books about the use of um, steel scabbards because of course if you're trying to keep a, a sword um, sharp and once the sword is sharpened if you're continually drawing it in and out of a metal scabbard there is an argument that it can blunt in the sword much more quickly than if you're using a wood and leather scabbard and that's certainly true to some extent but as I mentioned the wooden slats inside the scabbard and the use of, as I've mentioned before, a brass or German um, silver throat, so that the throat here, which is the thing which really makes contact with the edge, is softer than the steel of the blade. Um, those things mitigate the uh, bluntening effect of a metal scabbard. However, it is undeniable that a wood or wooden leather scabbard or leather scabbard helps keep a blade or helps protect the edge of a blade and minimises the problem of it bluntening with use. Um, but, um, it, but in the 19th century there were various you know, military authorities that talked about using wooden scabbards to keep swords sharp rather than having metal scabbards. But the counterpoint which always came back was that wooden scabbards were essentially too fragile. Um, and uh, there's, one, um, there's one authority, I can't remember uh, who it was now, who basically notes that in India, where native cavalry were allowed to use their own swords, their tulwars, that their wooden scabbards were continuously breaking and falling apart in cavalry usage. Um, and of course in India they, this was a known and a usual thing, so it was very easy and cheap to replace your wooden scabbard. But from a sort of British government supply, supply uh, chain point of view, this was a very strong negative point because they didn't want to have, have to be worrying about continuously supplying new scabbards for, for scabbards that are continuously getting damaged and broken. So that's one point. There is one other point apart from durability and economy and that point is um, water and the protection of the blade from rain and damp. And uh, very simply Wood and wooden leather scabbards and leather scabbards let water in much more often than steel scabbards do. Now that's not to say that steel scabbards are watertight, of course they're not, but you'll notice that in the era when steel scabbards are in use, swords generally have a leather washer up here that you can hopefully see. And that leather washer, when it sits down onto the throat of the metal scabbard, basically water seals it. There are no other holes in the scabbard anywhere, um, so that sword is more or less watertight now. It would get water in it if you put it literally underwater, but against rain at least, it's going to keep the blade um, protected from, from water. Now, that's important for various reasons. The three main reasons for it are, obviously, you don't want rust on your sword. It's annoying, you have to clean it. Um, or it will eventually damage the blade and it's unsightly. Okay, so that's the number one reason. Secondly, uh, rust on an edge essentially bluntens it. Okay, when rust forms on steel it uh, corrodes into the steel but it, during the chemical process it also kind of amasses a crust, a crust on the surface of the steel. If you have a sharp edge and you allow it to rust it won't be very sharp anymore. Okay, so it ruins the use of the weapon as a weapon. But, perhaps most importantly, and perhaps the strongest reason why, is when a sword rusts in the scabbard, they very often get stuck. I can verify this myself because I have 
Um, I buy and sell antique swords, as most of you guys know, and I have had a fair number, probably between five and ten, antique swords come to me which have been more or less stuck in their scabbards, okay? I had one sword, which is actually in my personal collection now, as one of my favourite swords, that was utterly stuck in the scabbard. It was a leather scabbard, water had uh, seeped in at the seam of the leather, and created rust that had essentially fused or welded the leather to the surface of the scabbard. And it was utterly impossible to draw the sword. Obviously in a combat situation this is a very bad thing. If your sword rusts overnight, suddenly you're in a situation where you have to draw your sword to defend yourself and it, the sword won't come out of the scabbard. So very clearly you do not want a blade to rust in the scabbard because it could very likely get stuck in there. Okay. Um, and uh, just, just to add a little appendix, the way that I eventually had to get that sword out of that scabbard, I tried using uh, soaking with oil, I, I used um, an extreme amount of uh, force actually, with obviously trying not to damage the sword, and luckily I, I didn't, but I tried uh, using clamps and um, even rubber mallets and all sorts of things to try and force the scabbard off. I could not get that sword out of that scabbard. The only thing in the end, uh, that got it out um, was that I had to actually cut the stitching of the leather scabbard so I essentially had to partially ruin the scabbard although I did it in such a way that it doesn't really show very much um, and I actually with a knife carefully cut through the stitching of the leather scabbard and had to peel the leather off the blade before I could get the blade out. What was interesting is there wasn't a very large portion, there wasn't a very large amount of the blade had rusted, it was only a small area, but that was enough to utterly glue the blade into the scabbard. Um, and once I, I peeled off the leather from that region of the blade, the sword blade came straight out and the rest of the sword was in very good condition. Um, so there is a, another and not very often mentioned reason why a steel scabbard or a brass scabbard can be good, because it prevents water getting into the scabbard and protect, protects it therefore from rusting, which is obviously unsightly, can blunten the edge, but most importantly, it can lead to the sword actually getting stuck in the scabbard. So there we go. There are the main reasons why you might want a metal scabbard, usually of um, brass or steel or iron. Okay, thank you.